Morning everyone, happy Friday. We have made it to the end of our first week of term four of remote learning. Now we are going to be continuing with our story today where we have been looking at Liv and Tranio who live in Pompeii in um, August of 79 AD. Um, now we are going to continue with our story for today. Um, we have got our um, six initiates and our three learning chunks. Okay, so here is your first initiate. Now we have got two, the other one is just on a separate slide. So um, on the first box, I'd like us to think about what would we be doing if we are happy and having fun? So we're kind of looking at an action feeling, show don't tell sentence. What might we be doing to have fun in your first box, please? Okay, so it might be um, smiling, laughing, chuckling, all those kind of things to show we're happy. Now our second initiate here, is we're going to be having a look at punctuation. And um, all of these things that Liv can see, she and um, they make her feel happy. But we're going to be having a look at the idea of apostrophe for possession. So we've got our, um, our noun, the dancer, the performer, the musician, Tranio, the director. They are things, they are proper nouns. Well, they're nouns in general. Um, and something that belongs to that person is making Liv feel happy happy. So could it be the dancer's um, wobbly legs or the performer's masks, the musician's instruments, whatever it is, something that belongs to that person is making Liv feel happy. So in your second box, could you jot down the phrases that I'm looking for? So the dancer's legs, but correctly using the apostrophe for possession. So this should be also a noun, so a thing that belongs to the person um, that is making Liv happy. So give that a go for me, please. Okay, so we might have lots of different ideas here. I haven't just any of them down because we could have plenty, but performers' masks, musicians' music, Tranio's um, laugh, the director's instructions. It could be lots of different things that could be making Liv feel happy. So we're going to use this in our first um, learning chunk for today. We're going to talk about how Liv was feeling, show don't tell sentence, and what was making her feel happy. Liv laughed with delight at Tranio's large woolen hairy mask. The performer's jokes made her full of happiness, full with happiness. So the jokes belong to the performer. The joke is our thing, and so that's why we've used our apostrophe for possession. The um, wooden, large woolen hairy masks also belong to Tranio, so that is why we have got our apostrophe for possession there. And then I've used my show don't tell sentence of lived laughed with delight. So I'd like you to use that show don't tell the action sentence and apostrophes for possessions explaining why Liv feels so happy. So only really looking at two sentences here. So about five to seven minutes on this one for me, please. And then come back for your second learning chunk. OK, so I'm going to show you the next picture that we have in our story. And this is what starts to happen here. So this is a really good view of our mask. We've also got lots of things starting to fall down, people starting to feel scary. You can almost feel that something might be moving or is making something move as well. So this is the next picture that we're gonna focus on for the next two um, learning chunks. So first of all, what is happening? I'd like you to please include a verb so doing word and a noun, a thing to describe what is happening. For example, the walls were shaking. So the walls is your noun, shaking is your verb. Could you come up with a list of all the things that you think happening with that picture, please? Okay, let's have a look. Stones falling, ground shaking, walls cracking, all those kind of things that are happening. Now our second learning chunk, I'm um, sorry, second initiate for this learning chunk is some time adverbs. So when did these things happen? Now we could be really creative, we could talk about like the general time of day that it is, or we could also talk about what's just happened before. So, um, you know, during the middle of the performance, just after rehearsals, those kind of things as well. So in your fourth box, can you jot down when did these things start happening, please? Okay, so we have things like um, suddenly or a minute later, at that moment, after rehearsals, when the sun was at its shine, um, at its highest, all of those things tell us when something happened. 
We're gonna use these, what was happening and when they happened to come up with our next learning chunk. Starting with my time adverb, at that moment, something happened. Nice short sentence. We're not going on to explain everything straight away. We are really grabbing the reader's attention there. At that moment, something happened. I wanna know, I wanna keep reading. The stones creaked, the flaps began to rattle and the building quivered. Tranio froze on the spot. Everyone fell silent. So I've got lots of my um, reading rainbow lenses going on here. I've started with my um, time adverb, adverbial. I've also done my um, verb and noun phrase together to describe what was happening. I've used a conjunction. Now I've used and. I think we might be able to up-level that one as well. And on the end, I've also included some things that you can hear. Remember, if you're always looking to add things, think about your fantastics. What could you hear? What were you imagining? What, was, what could you taste? Maybe you could taste something already in the air. Be creative with this. So I would like you, please, to start with a time adverb to tell me when something happened and then describe all the things that were happening, please. And if you could use a conjunction, excellent. If you can make it better than and, even better. I'm gonna give you five, seven minutes to do that for me, please, and then come back to me for our final learning chunk today. Okay. So, um, this last section here, we are going to create a metaphor. Now, the first thing I'd like us to do is to come up with some synonyms, so some alternative words for black and dark, okay? You might want to use a thesaurus for this. You might want to um, think about all those words that you already know for those kind of things, but jot them down in your fifth box, alternative words, some synonyms for black and dark, please. Okay, so we may have darkness, gloom, dusk, night. All of those words will help us create this metaphor. So what's gonna happen is we are going to create a metaphor, something that can't actually happen, talking about how um, the ash cloud, the darkness, the gloom, the dust, surrounded the actors and Liv and Tranio. So I want us to come up with some other words for surrounded. Not nice words, we don't want like a blanket of darkness because a blanket has a really nice connotation with it. That's kind of what we use to snuggle up with. That's not something that I would be ne necessarily um, deem as like negative. So think of some negative words for surrounded or negative things that can surround you and then put them in your last box, please. Okay. So wrapped covered or draped. They are not necessarily positive. They might not be like the most negative things, but I wouldn't say um, that I could be covered in a positive way, but we can use this to create a metaphor out of. So I'm gonna show you an example. Suddenly, darkness wrapped the stage. The actors and lived looked on apprehensively as the stone pillars shuttered. The stone steps where Liv sat began to groan. So I've talked about that darkness, the dark, the black, literally covering the stage, but I've used those alternative words. That's the ash cloud, that's the darkness. It is metaphorically showing us that when things get dark and gloomy, quite often it means that something bad is going to happen. It's almost using that pathetic fallacy as well. So the darkness wraps the stage and um, I've used some really nice vocabulary apprehensively um, as the stone pillars shuttered. So I'm talking about the things that are happening as well. And then I've used another metaphor where I've talked about the fact that the steps began to groan. Steps can't actually groan, but when things move and that stone is rubbing against each other, that is what it might sound like. So I'd like you to use metaphors in this last section. You could use that one that we've created together. You can add in extra ones as well if you'd like to deepen the moment. And I'd like you to describe how darkness covered the theatre, please. Five, seven minutes and then come back to me afterwards, please. Okay, so we have now moved on to something eerie happening. Now we don't know what it is, we're not 100% sure. I've given you a little bit of clues and we did that experience day on Monday as well, so we probably have a bit of an idea. But our reader and especially our characters 
don't know what's happening yet. You do not get notifications to tell you when a volcano is going to erupt, especially 2,000 years ago. So they don't know what is happening. So we'll have to write about that next week. And you're not 100% sure what's going to happen either. There might be a few twists in our plot line. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I'm loving reading your writing as always. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Bye guys.